from June Taylor. Every season, I love to change out my placemats and table runner. It just gives my kitchen a whole new feel. When we saw this fabric collection from Andover, we just loved it. We thought it was so cheery and kitcheny, and these six fabrics just work so well together. So in your kits, you'll be getting all the fabrics you need to make four placemats and a table runner, and you'll also be getting our sew by number or quilt as you go batting that has all the numbers printed on it so it sews up quick and easy. You're also gonna get a full instruction sheet. And then my favorite part is this color-coded guide. It shows the pictures of all the different fabrics. It tells exactly what you need to cut out. And then it even shows you a, a guide, a graphic guide of all the different cuts you're gonna make out of each of those fabrics. We're gonna construct this placemat today. So I hope you'll join us and sew along. Following our guide, I cut out all the fabrics for one placemat. So to begin with, the large floral ends up being a five inch by five inch square. And then we're gonna cut our strips to go around. First the orange, and then the blue floral, and then the tone on tone blue strips. And then finally our corner pieces are gonna be made out of the large floral rectangle. And lastly, we're gonna cut our binding. All the cuts are very easy. Nothing is less than a half inch increment. Before we cut our fabrics and after we cut our fabrics, we like to use starch. And today we use Starch Savvy, which is a fragrance-free non-aerosol product. You just simply spray it on like this, let the starch soak in for a little bit, and then press it. And that will make the fabrics nice and stiff and very easy to finger press as we construct our placemats and table runner. We cut out the backing of our placemats 16 by 22, and then turn it over so that the back side, the wrong side is facing up. And then you're gonna cut out your placemat. I've got that done here. And what you wanna do is leave about a half inch border around the outside edge so that you have a little room to work with. Now, you can smooth this out, or if you want it to be more secure, you can use quilt basting spray. This is basically an adhesive that allows you to have the batting stick to the backing. We always spray it on the batting side and it'll smooth out and stick right to the backing. If you're gonna use basting spray, you'd always wanna put a piece of paper down first to protect your work area. And now we're ready to sew. Take piece one, which is our five inch square of the large floral, and place it in the center over the number one. Then take piece number two, which is a strip, one of our orange strips, and place it right sides together over the top of piece one, aligning both raw edges on the line that you see on the batting. So the lines on the batting are not sewing lines, but they're placement lines. Then we're going to go to the machine and we're going to sew through all layers, piece one, two, batting and backing, in a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Now that the stitching is done, we're going to remove the pins and we're gonna flip that fabric strip over. It should land right on the line, and we're gonna finger press that seam allowance open. Because we've starched the fabrics, finger pressing should be very easy. Now we're going to position piece number three, which is our other two and a half by five inch rectangle, against the other side of piece one, right sides together, raw edges even, and we're going to sew in a quarter of an inch. And now we're gonna remove our pins and flip piece number three over. It should land right on the line as it does. And again, we're gonna finger press that seam open so it's nice and flat. I'm gonna flip over to the back. We've used contrasting thread in the bobbin, so it's easy for you to see that all the steps of sewing through the top two layers, the batting and the backing, is all done in one step. And that's why it's called Quilt As You Go. Now we're going to take piece four, which is two and a half by nine inches, and place piece four against one, two, and three, right sides together, raw edges even, so that they line up on the placement line on the batting, and sew in a quarter of an inch seam allowance.
then we're going to do the same thing with piece number five, which is our last orange two and a half by nine inch strip. Continue to place and sew pieces of fabric by number, always aligning with the previously sewn pieces, flipping over and finger pressing. And we'll apply our last several pieces in the same manner. Again, we're going to take our pins out, flip our piece over, align it with the lines on the batting, and finger press that seam open. The last step will be forming the corners. These are our short rectangles out of the large floral fabric. Let's position those in place, and those are 14, 15, 16, and 17. And sew those right sides together, raw edges even, and sew in a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Now that we have all of our sewing done, we can finally use our iron. So let's turn over the placemat to the front side and give it a good press. Now we're going to trim our placemat to the correct size. So what we want to do is lift up our fabrics, look for the outer edge cutting line, line up our ruler, and use your rotary cutter to cut along the edges. So we're going to do this four times. Find the line on the edge of the batting, line up your ruler, and use your rotary cutter to cut the squared edges. And this will be done on all four sides. So you'll be trimming off some of the excess fabric but you'll have your perfectly squared up placemat when we're done. Now our placemat is ready for binding. Our green binding strips are already cut. And what we need to do is join two of them together so that they reach around the entire placemat. Lay one strip down, right side up, or the pretty side up. Take another strip and lay that on the first one, wrong side up, and match up the corners so that it's perpendicular or at a right angle. And then what we're going to do is draw a diagonal line from the top to the bottom of the strip that we just added. We'll put a pin in place here and then go over to the sewing machine and sew right on that diagonal line. After the sewing is complete, you can trim that to a quarter of an inch. Now we're going to turn it over to the right side and go to our pressing surface and press seam allowances toward one side. Now we're going to press our binding strips along the long edge, wrong sides together. After the binding is pressed, you're going to open up one end and bring a corner down to the bottom to basically make a right angle. And then we're going to press. After we're done pressing, we can trim that to a quarter of an inch. Now fold your binding in half again and repress. And that little angled opening is going to come into play when we finish binding our very first placemat. We're now going to pin the raw edges of our binding to the right sides and raw edges of our placemat. You want to let a little bit of a tail, say five inches of the binding loose at one end so that we can eventually tuck the other end inside of it. Begin to pin your binding on the edge of your placemat. Continue to pin your binding on the edge of your placemat until you get to about a quarter of an inch from the corner. And let's put a pin on the placemat a quarter of an inch from the edge. Not the binding strip, but the actual placemat, and that's going to be our stopping point. 
So now we will begin sewing, leaving that little flap area open. Sew in a quarter inch seam allowance and sew all the way to the end where you get to that pin that we put in there, marking a quarter of an inch from the edge. Remember to back tack at the beginning and back tack at the end. So take your pins out, take your binding strip and pull it up to form a right angle and also that all your edges are straight. Fold it over itself and align the raw edge of the binding with the raw edge of the placemat and continue to pin all the way down to the next corner. Make sure to stop pinning about a quarter of an inch from the edge and you can even put a pin on the placemat side as your reminder. Now go ahead and stitch a quarter of an inch starting at the edge all the way down to the pin marking quarter inch in from the next corner. Now let's do the same thing. Let's take our pins out, lift our binding up at the corner, form a right angle, fold it over itself, and continue pinning raw edges together of your binding and your placemat. and continue on and do the same for the next corner. So after that last corner, we're going to bring the edge of our binding strip on the last side and bring it about three or four inches beyond our entry point. And we're going to open up that little flap that we left initially and we're going to trim our binding so that it fits right inside that angled opening. And then we're going to simply finish off by sewing down in a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Making sure to back tack at the beginning of our seam line and again back tack exactly where we started our binding around the edge. Now that the binding is all on, we're going to take our iron and press that binding. Press it nice and flat on front and we're going to be able to bring it around to the back and secure it in place. Look how nice the 45 degree mitered corners look on both the front and on the back when we use this method. You can secure it in place by stitching through it or hand stitching. So machine or hand stitch. Our placemat is now complete, so we can do the other three as well. And then we can get started on our table runner. And that's assembled the exact same way, just easy sew by number. If you've liked these fabrics and these designs, just click on the link below to purchase or go to www.junetaylor.com.